Right, it's Mr. Palmer again. Uh, second video in the five minute gap. Had a drink of water, so I shouldn't be choking in this one. Make sure you go over your notes on lists before you watch this video, okay? So, off you go. Go find those note videos, those notes, check them out. So, here we're talking about cues. So, the big questions for this little video how can a list or an array be turned into a queue? And then how do you, again, add and remove data from a queue? How do you traverse it to locate data in it? <clears throat> so, quick recap on data structures. Remember, we were talking about having lots of lots of variables to store similar related data. It becomes unmanageable within a program. And so, therefore, we can use a data structure where we're grouping multiple related values of the same type under a single identifier. Uh, last video looked at using a list where you had nodes holding your data each node had a pointer which pointed at the location of the next node and then at the end of it you had a terminator which uh, signified the end of the list and here we were saying it has an advantage over an array because the data items are stored non-contiguously so you can just keep adding data in and just keep and shifting the pointer along uh, to point at the next node um, as required so a queue think about in general how a queue operates. You have all, everyone standing in a line, and then the first person to come into the queue is the first person to come out, and everything shuffles along, and then the next person gets serviced, and they come out, and so on and so forth. All right? So a queue as a data structure is what we call FIFO, first in, first out. So this, for example, I remember last uh, video I talked about uh, the about memory about RAM being represented by a one-dimensional array of, of addresses which refer to the RAM okay the 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 locations in in the actual physical memory okay so I've got my address one which is storing my first data uh, item of data and as data is arriving and I'm storing in the queue so I have a head of the queue and a tail of the queue and then as data arrives I add it into my queue and the tail of my queue keeps shifting along as I add data in. Now, you can also then imagine when I'm ready to process data, what happens to the head of my queue. The data is removed or processed and the head of my queue shifts along. <clears throat> So you can think from there straight away, if you wanted to test if a queue was empty, the head and the tail will be pointing at the same location. All right. So uh, is, you know, if you want to know when you, when you can start adding data in, it's going to be quite straightforward. The head and the tail are pointing in the same location. Uh, there's a bit of a problem though uh, with this thing over here as uh, if you were using an array, for example, to hold your queue, what's going to happen when the tail of your queue hits the bottom of uh, the array? If you've been removing data, you technically have space at the head of the queue, so there must be a process here of joining the tail to the head. And this is what we call a, a, a circular queue. And so there's a bit more complicated over there. As a, there's something for you to go away and research and have a look at. So, your queues are really good because uh, you can overcome the limitation of a fixed size of arrays. Because if you have a circular queue, as you remove data from the front of your queue, you just start putting your new data that uh, you can shift your tail to there to above the head, and you can start populating data from from above. Okay. Uh, and a simple applications of queues are we use them in buffers to store and forward data. Because, uh, for example, as data is processed and it's being sent to be printed, it can come in and it goes into the buffer, and then they are sent out from there to, you know, to by by this, the the microcontroller within this, the printer um, in the order in which they arrive uh, for printing. The spool queue itself. So you learned about spooling uh, a, a few a few uh, days back, and. The spool queue itself obviously implies that print jobs are stored in the form of a, of a queue. 
Uh, obviously, uh, a limitation of it though is that you can run out of space as the head and the tail are both incremented. So that's where you need to now go away and do a bit of research into think you need to find out how a circular queue works. So your next steps based on this is you need to be able to write algorithms for checking if the queue is empty or full. I gave you a big hint earlier on on a, a way to figure out if a queue is empty and then based on uh, your knowledge of arrays right you should be able to think about how can you check if the queue is full remember that if you have a kind of if you have a circular queue your full indicator is not going to be the fact that your tail has hit the bottom of the array there needs to be something in comparison to the head pointer okay you should be able to write an algorithm for adding data to a queue so obviously once you've figured out uh, where the tail is and if there's space you should be able to add data in and uh, think about a little algorithm here as well for basically shifting the tail pointer to the head of the array once it's at the end of the array obviously it can only go there if the head pointer itself is not at the top of the array All right so big questions uh, how can a list or an array be turned into a queue uh, and then you should be able to think about how do you add and remove data and how do you traverse a queue. Thank you very much and watch out for the next video coming up on uh, trees, I believe.